the Institute's Office of Public Outreach. He's the author of numerous books, including The Equation That Couldn't Be Solved, which is the first extensive popular account of the group theory, language of symmetry. His new book is, is God a Mathematician, which was released earlier this year and discusses the question of why mathematics is so powerful, describing things ranging from the laws of nature and the properties of ordinary knots. And those books, by the way, he's going to sign. There are a bunch of the books outside, and he's going to sign some, so they'll be available for sale a little later. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, um, Dr. Mario Livio. Thank you. Uh, I actually, you know, uh, somebody said that it is very difficult to predict, especially the future. So I'm going to not tell you so much about what the future will bring us, because that's always surprises. Rather, I will tell you about what Hubble has done so far with a little bit of a look towards the future. Um, I gave a somewhat similar talk to the Royal Society last year, and they asked me, uh, how were these top 10 scientific achievements chosen? And I said they were chosen unanimously, namely I chose them. So uh, I, I used my own judgment to, to choose this. Now, given the time constraints, I'm going to tell you that although I have 10 topics there, you know, depending on the time, maybe I'll only describe five, six, seven, eight. You see how, how we do with this. Uh, so let me start the accelerating universe and dark energy. So basically, what do we do? We look at very, very distant uh, explosions that are called type 1a supernovae. Uh, and these are this thing here. You see a galaxy here, and then boom, this point of light appears. A galaxy there, boom, this point of light appears, and so on. So these are very, very powerful explosions. They are so luminous that we can see them half across the universe. Now, we have known since the 1920s that the universe is expanding, but we thought that the universe should be slowing down. And the reason it should be slowing, and it should be slowing the same reason that these keys slow down or that, you know, when you try to launch something, it tends to slow down unless you push it with something. Uh, instead, what we found, you know, you look at this very distant supernovae and you can tell how the universe was expanding then compared to how it's expanding now. And what we found to our amazement is that the expansion is actually speeding up. So this is the equivalent to, you know, me taking again these keys out of my pocket, throwing them up, and not only they will not be slowing down, but they will start speeding up towards the ceiling. This is how shocking this discovery was to us, and it has since then been confirmed by observations of the cosmic microwave background, which maybe John Mather will tell you a little bit more about in a minute. In any case, what we discovered was that the universe, we believe, started with a Big Bang. At the beginning, it was indeed slowing down under the force of gravity of all the mass within it, but then some five billion years ago or so, it started suddenly speeding up. And the question is, why is it doing that? Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this, but the main thing we think is doing it is something we now call dark energy, which is about 72% of the energy of the universe. So it's the dominant energy form in the universe. All the matter that we know and love, matter we are made of, Mars is made of, galaxies are made of, and so on, is just about 4% of the energy of the universe. About 23, 22% of the universe is in the form of dark matter. This is matter we know it's there because we see its gravitational effects, but which we cannot see. It's a bit like when you fly at night in, in an airplane, you look down, all you see is light from luminous cities. Uh, most of the mass of the Earth is in the dark. Most of the mass of the universe is dark. We think that this may be in the form of some exotic subatomic particles, which if we're really lucky, maybe the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva will actually discover. But 72% is in the form of this dark energy. Now, here comes the embarrassing part. We don't really have a clue what this dark energy is. We know its effect, it's speeding the universe up, but we don't know what it is. Now, you remember that about 70% of the surface of the Earth is covered with water. Imagine we didn't have a clue what water was. This is the situation we're currently in. Uh, let me skip this. 
Uh, next topic, the distance scale and the age of the universe. So Edwin Hubble, after whom our telescope is named, discovered in the 1920s that our universe is expanding. But he discovered something more than that. He discovered that there is a tight relation between the distance that a certain galaxy is and the speed that it is receding from us. Now, once you have a relation between the distance and the speed, and the relation, by the way, is linear, so that if something is twice more distant, it also moves twice faster from us. Once you have a relation like this, you can sort of roll it back, like, you know, like a video uh, you, that you, you uh, run backwards, and you can discover when did the expansion start. Like, if I tell you, you know, that the distance from here to Baltimore is, uh, I don't know what it is, 40 miles, let's say, and you travel at 40 miles an hour, you know, it will take you an hour to get there. Of course, it, w it never does because, you know, the parkway is always full of repairs and things, but that's a different question. So, uh, in this particular case, you can use this to roll this movie of the universe back and discover how old our universe is. The problem is in astronomy is that while you can determine speeds relatively easily because you use something that's similar to the Doppler effect, you know, this thing that when something moves away, then waves get spread out. So you can, by seeing how waves get spread out, you can tell how fast it's moving. Distances are very, very difficult to tell in astronomy. You know, you look at the sky, it looks two-dimensional. How do you tell distances? So one of the ways we do this is we use these special stars that are called Cepheid variables because these stars have this property that they vary in their light intensity very, very regularly. But it's not only that they do that, there is a very tight relation between the period of this variation and how bright these stars are. So basically, all you need to do is measure this period, and you can tell the intrinsic brightness of these stars. Once you know the intrinsic brightness, and you know what brightness you measure, you can tell how far away they are, because we know that the brightness falls like the inverse square of the distance. So with Hubble, we have done this now for tens of ga of ga uh, with the Cepheid variables, and we now know the age of the universe uh, to be 13.7 billion years, and until a few years ago, we knew this number to an accuracy of about 10% uh, or so. Before Hubble, by the way, this number was not known to better than within a factor of two. Now, very recently, we actually used Cepheid variables in this galaxy, NGC 4258, for which we uh, know the distance very well from other measurements, maser measurements uh, in the radio, and we now using this uh, have managed to improve the value of the Hubble constant or the rate of expansion of the universe, and we know this to better than 5%. So we now know the rate of expansion of the universe to better than 5%. Evolution of galaxies and the cosmic star formation rate. This image here, this is the Hubble ultra deep field this is the deepest image in visible light ever taken. Uh, if you look here, do you see this thing that has only this diffraction spike? That's a star. There is another star somewhere up here. But other than that, every point of light you see here, and by that I mean even this little point of light here or this little point of light here, is a galaxy with 100 billion stars like the sun. Every point of light here. There are some 10,000 galaxies in this image alone, and this occupies an area like this on the night sky. So actually from this you can actually estimate right away that in the observable universe there are some 200 billion galaxies. Now, we can look a little bit closer at this, or even closer, and one thing that we see is that, you know, you're used to seeing galaxies that have these very nice shapes. They have these spiral shapes or elliptical shapes, you know, and so on. And you look here, and most of the galaxies here look like train wrecks. I mean, this is really horrible. Not only that, but we can actually determine that the physical sizes of these distant galaxies are smaller than galaxies today. I not, don't mean they look smaller. They are physically smaller in size. Now, these two features, the smaller size and the fact that they are so disturbed in their morphologies, 